Hi guys, welcome to Cisco Nate. I wanted to take a second today to thank my first 50 subscribers. That's a big milestone for me. I know it's minuscule, drop in the bucket for the entire world, but for me that's a big deal. I wanted to let you guys know that I am now trying to grow my subscriber base actively. So if you can, please like, comment, subscribe, and share this with your friends, anybody you think will find it useful. Last thing I wanted to do is give you guys an update or remind you about the, the features of this channel. I use cards, which will now start popping up now that I have more content. Uh, that refer you to other videos or useful tips. Like if I mention PuTTY and PuTTY configuration, you might see a card pop up that links to a PuTTY configuration video rather than embedding everything in this one video. I also wanted to remind you of the bookmarks that will be down in the comments section or description section of my video. And that lets you jump back and forth and pass, say, the intro of the videos or the requirements if you've already seen this video and are just trying to rehash a certain particular point. So please don't forget about those. We'll get back into the video now. So this video is going to be about deploying Firepower Threat Defense, the virtual appliance, in AWS. And you'll have to hook that up to an FMC somewhere, whether it's virtual or physical. And in this video, it's going to be an FMC V that's deployed in AWS as well. You can check out the card to the other video that shows you how to deploy that if you don't have one available yet. See you guys in a few. All right, the requirements for this video, deploying FTDV in AWS as this video is designed, requires you to have a computer with access to the internet. You probably already have that if you're watching this video. The second thing it requires is an AWS account that is fully verified and billable, i.e. you have a payment method on file and it has been verified so that you can spin up these instances. The third thing you need is an FMC that's already running, either virtual or hardware. It doesn't matter if it's in AWS and the same VPC, a different VPC, or at home with a physical appliance, it doesn't matter. The last thing you need is PuTTY and or PuTTY Gen. Well, you need both, technically. And that's for SSH access as AWS has designed. All right, so let's get to it. All right, guys, so here we are back again. This is going to be a rather long video. This is going to be a soup to nuts video of how to configure FTDV in AWS and manage it via an FMC, whether it's local or remote. Now, the order in which you stand these up, you can do FTDV first and then go and set up your FMC and then finish the registration. It's up to you. But uh, if you click on the card here, you'll be able to do uh, the configuration of FMC V in AWS if you also want to try that out. All right, so I'm going to open up AWS as I normally do and a VPC and EC2 tab. Uh, that way it's easy to get these configurations done. I'm also going to search for the Cisco FTDV install guide. And this is useful because it helps keep you on track in uh, with respect to the order of the configurations you need to do. Typically starting with the VPC and then configuring your subnets, your internet gateways, your routing table security groups, ENIs and elastic IPs. Now, I'm also going to open up the configuration guide for FMC. And the reason we're going to do this is because the FMC configuration guide includes a section which allows you to determine the ports that you will need to configure on the security groups. It's down under the FMC configuration guide for your version, 6.5 in this case, under events and assets, security, internet access, and communication ports. Now, as you saw before, um, if you watch my other FMCV video, I take this guide, the whole chart and table here, and I paste it in Excel so we can do some manipulation. And the reason this is important, the reason we do this, is because we're configuring FTD, not FMC. So we need to be able to filter for just the parts that are applicable to us. Now, we're we'll gonna drag these out here so that we can collapse these rows, make it a little more readable. We're gonna drag those out, paste it in Excel, um, and then I'm going to control shift and double click on these, but actually the easiest way is to come over here to, I believe it's page layouts, nope, data, home format auto fit row height, format auto fit column width, that makes this thing about as easy as to read as possible, right? And then what we want to do is take this top column here and add a filter, data filter. 
And then you want to take the filter and start sorting by the device that we're working with, which is FTD, any device, NGIPS. And what you want to look at here is, in particular, is the inbound. Remember, outbound in AWS is already allowed for anything, every protocol. You need to pay attention to the inbound that we need to allow through the security group. So we need 22, 161, 443 on the data interfaces. And that's the one uh, enhancement I've submitted is this column also needs to have the interface which you need to apply. SSH and SNMP are supposed to be on the management interface. I know it's not shown here, but I'm telling you. The 443, the Ike V2, uh, captive portal, that's all on the data interfaces. And then 8305 and 8989 is on management. All right, so we have a general idea of what we'll need. We'll put that away for later. Uh, we'll go ahead and close this tab now that we don't need that information. We'll leave the AWS one open and we'll get to configuration. So in your AWS account, click Launch VPC. Uh, we'll go ahead and start it with one subnet. We'll go ahead and label this FTDV test. We'll leave the default CIDR blocks and subnets. That works because it's private. We'll label this FTDV management because this is our management subnet. And I'll go ahead and label that. <clears throat> this is very important that you clearly label these because later it will help when you're doing all of the associations and stitching everything together. Oh, so I already had an old one. Let me just go ahead and delete the older one here. All right. And so here's our new one here. All right, so I've got it clearly labeled FTDV test. <coughs> now we want to come look at our subnets. Here's our management subnet. That's great. Uh, and there's our VPC. Uh, when it stood this up, it also created an internet gateway and a route table. So we can look down here at the route table and we should see that this is associated with our management subnet. Let me pull this out. FTDV management. Perfect. Should have some routes in it, one going to the default route out the gateway and one going for local routes, so that's perfect. We'll go ahead and name this route table so we don't get confused, FTDV MGMT route. <coughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and create the rest of the subnets we need. Management subnet will be used for diagnostic interface and for the management interface. So we need to create two more subnets, one for in and one for out, FTDV in. We'll go ahead and associate it with our current VPC. 10.0.1.0 slash 24. I'm just picking the next slash 24 because 10.0.0.0 was used for management. We'll create. I'll create another subnet. NTV out. Associated with the VPC. 10.0.2.0 slash 24. Again, the next slash 24 out of the CIDR block. <coughs> All right. Now, these, the new ones I just created, out and in, you'll see don't have a routing table that is fully configured, and that's okay. And we'll come back to that in a minute after we actually create the ENIs, the interfaces we need. So if we're going through this, we got the VPC, we got the internet gateway, there's only one that is necessary for the way I am configuring this. That is already created, so we don't need anything else. Now we just created the rest of the subnets we need. We need a total of three. One is the management subnet, on which the management interface and the diagnostic interface, two out of the four interfaces we need are. The last two are in and out, where the inside and outside interfaces will be. We've got routing tables for all of those that were created as a side effect of creating these subnets. You can see the route tables here. All right, the last thing we need is security groups. Now security groups are intimately tied to network interfaces. And if we look, we currently only have <coughs> zero network interfaces. So I'm going to have to create a network interface. We're going to create the management network interface, FTDV management inf. We're going to associate with the management subnet. And we're going to say, oh, you know what? We need to create security groups first. And that's exactly why this guide is here. I totally forgot that. So let's do that. This is our default security group. Now I like to prescriptively configure everything. So default security group, I'm not really actually going to use. I'm going to create a new one called FTDV MGMT. And remember, security groups are tied to interfaces, not subnets. So this is for the management interface SG. 
allow access inbound to MGMT interface. And I'm going to add the rule. I'm going to pretend like I trust this firewall to do all of the filtering. So I'm actually going to allow all traffic to the management interface. Actually, sorry, this is not the uh, outside interface. This is management. So for management, if we look at our table that we had here again, we need SSH and SNMP if we really want it inbound. And then 8305. So let's go ahead and allow that. That's SSH, TCP. So we'll say allow SSH. And for right now, I'm going to leave this open so I can come in from anywhere. Allow SSH to MGMT. We're going to add another rule to allow management, which is a custom TCP rule. 8305, that's what was in our chart for management. Allow FMC management to management interface of the FTD. And then we'll go ahead and just allow SNMP polling even though we don't really need it. I'm just going to configure this as if we were in a uh, live network. And SNMP is UDP port 161 inbound. And I'm going to go ahead and just say allow anything. Allow SNMP to MGMT. All right, so we've got a security group for the management interface, it's not connected yet, that allows all of the management traffic to the box. We're going to go ahead and create the security group. <coughs> I'm going to create another security group, FTDV inbound security group, allow inbound, allow, allows traffic from resources out to internet. So remember, this is in means it's associated with the inside interface, and we want to allow the traffic inbound on the inside interface to go out. So we need to allow everything. We trust all of our resources internally to go out. So I'm going to add a all traffic rule from anything internally, which should be on the 10.0.0.16. 0 Again, just for simplicity, I'm using an open ACL here. Allows server traffic to internet inbound to the inside interface which means it's destined to go to the internet <clears throat> i'm going to create another security group ftdv out security group and remember this is associated with the outside interface so this is all the traffic coming from the internet towards our servers and I'm going to allow all traffic to the firewall from the internet. Now, I'm not sure if you'd really want to do this, but again, I'm explaining how this works. You can choose to deploy this however you want. I'm allowing all traffic to hit the outside interface of the firewall, and I'm trusting the firewall to be configured properly. At this point, you could modify this however you want. Last rule we need is for the fourth interface, and that is the diagnostic interface. Diag security group. Allow diag uh, stick traffic. Now, in the diagnostic interface, we can bring up our trusty old box here and so what we would need to allow in general for the diagnostics is 8989 and SSH. So I'm going to go back to my diagnostic. 8989 was TCP and SSH. So I'm going to allow SSH again from everything. Allow SSH. Custom TCP, 8989. Create security. So I have very prescriptively created four security groups. Now I can go ahead and create the network interfaces that require those security groups. So I'm going to create a FTDV management int associate with the VPC or the subnet. And we want, since this is a management interface, we want to associate with the management 
subnet, and then we want to apply the management security group. We want to do that four times. FTDV diag, associate with the management interface for the diagnostic, and then apply, apply the diagnostic security group. FTDV in inf associated with the inside interface subnet and the inside security group td the out interface associated with the outside subnet and the outside security group again this is why all the naming is very important so you know which ones to associate it with otherwise you get random strings and now I've got it tied to the security group, so I'm going to go ahead and actually name these here where it makes it a little easier to see it. So I've got my subnets, I've got my interfaces, I've got my security groups, I've got my route tables. Um, the last thing I have and that I can create is an elastic IP if it wasn't already allocated. So let's allocate an elastic IP. This gives us access to the internet or to reach in from the internet to a certain interface on our box. In this case, we wanna make sure management is accessible. You don't have to do it for a diagnostic unless you actually want to reach the diagnostic interface, but you will also eventually need to do it for the outside interface. So first one I'm gonna fire up, I'm going to associate with the management interface IP. And I'm gonna go ahead and create another one and associate to the outside network interface that will be spun up here. And that way we can actually test traffic later if you wanted to. We're not gonna do that in this video, but it's here. So now I've created the elastic IPs, I've created the interfaces, the security groups, the subnets, the route tables. We should be just about ready to actually spin up this instance and associate everything. All right, I think I, I, think I did it all. It's hard to remember everything. We'll go through here. Yep, we got all that stuff, great. So let's go ahead and launch the instance. Now I'm gonna come up to instances. And hit launch instance and this is where we go ahead and choose which image we're going to do we're going to select aws marketplace ngfwv searching for ftd or ftdv does not bring this up you want to go with the bring your own license because we're associating this with a uh, fmc to manage it so we'll hit select here there's only one instant even though it lists two there's only one instance currently available for this version so we'll hit connect or continue and you can scroll down to look at that one instance, but ultimately there's only one, it's already selected, so you can just hit configure instance details. Now, the network needs to be <coughs> associated with our uh, VPC, which is FTDV test. And then you wanna make sure the subnet that is initially fired up is the management one. So make sure if you created multiple, it might default to the wrong one. Select the management one, and then let it do its thing. Now down here, the network interface, ETH0 is the management interface. We want to choose the management interface, ENI, that we created. Now, for this box to successfully fire up, you need to assign four interfaces. You'll notice that once I attach a second interface, which is always diagnostic, ETH0 is management, ETH1 is diagnostic, I will not be able to add any more. And this actually induces a race condition. As soon as I launch this instance, I need to immediately attach the other two as soon as possible, typically within 12 to 15 seconds. Otherwise, your user data config, which we're gonna put down here, will fail to configure the manager for this instance. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my zero day config, my manager config here. And let's see, I'm gonna grab this config. I'm going to now you need to make sure this FMC IP is the actual IP either internally on the same subnet or externally uh, for your actual FMC. I'm not gonna go through the actual registration, but you need to have the correct IP for your manager here and then set the key that you wanna use. I've got the host name defined here and the password for the user. 
So we'll go ahead and copy this. We'll put it into our zero day config, or sorry, user data config. And then as soon as I click review and launch, again, I need to, and I re-emphasize this, attach the network interfaces, otherwise this will not work. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a second EC2 console here. And I want to look at my running instances. I want to have this prepared so that I can select the instance and then attach the last two interfaces as soon as possible. I'm going to go ahead and click review and launch. It hasn't launched yet. It's giving you a review first. Click launch. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new key pair for this. I'm going to call it FTDV key. We're going to download the key pair. We're going to go ahead and click launch instance. Now again, as soon as it shows up here, there it is, it's starting up. We want to go ahead and select network interfaces. We want to choose FTDV in and attach. All right, it's not available yet. Now it's available, attach. Now you want to click this one, click this one. It's invisibly also still selected and click attach here. And this lets you attach these as fast as possible. So, I've now attached all four interfaces. At this point, we just need to wait for this instance to finish powering on. So I can click View Instances here, and I'm going to go ahead and pan out. It'll be about 15-20 minutes while it fires up. We'll go ahead and pan out and uh, wait till it's done firing up. I'll see you guys in a minute. Alright, so we're back. And uh, if I did everything right, this... Uh FTD will be powered up in AWS. So I guess uh, first things first, let's go take that key that we downloaded, the PEM file. We'll pull it up, let me see. Filter for everything. FTDV key, that's what we named it. Open, okay. We'll give this a passphrase so that when we log in, we still have to type something, but uh, the credentials themselves are very secure. Save key, we'll go ahead and name it the same thing, FTDV key and it doesn't matter because the extension is .ppk once it's saved instead of .pem. There we go, that is saved. So now we'll launch PuTTY. I'll load this config. We'll go ahead and apply that PPK. Oh, it's actually already using one. That's good. So we'll go ahead and FTDVK, uh, make sure that's in there. Come up here to the session. We'll hit save so that it is saved under FTDV2. Uh, whoop, wrong one. Should be able to buddy, double click into that now. There we go, that's good. That means we got something. Login as admin, we'll pass my key. There we go, and show managers. Now if this worked correctly and we added the interfaces fast enough, it will have imported the user data and config. There we are. It has successfully configured the remote manager. Now you just need to go to your FMC, whether it is a physical appliance on site, remote from this AWS FTDV, or one sitting within the same VPC. In this case, my host I had set up for being in the same VPC. So that's it. Now I just got to go to the FMC site and configure it. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.